Didn't see no dogs, nor didn't nothing happen going to Widder's dump. When we got there, ten of us gone to the timber crew, and the rest of us in the new hole was just been marked off and, and started. Boggy ground it were, and heavy muck. We wrote it off in squares and sorting through it before we drag it with a big bucket and the winch. We'd begun to find bodies and parts of bodies from time back, way back. That happened sometimes in that kind of muck. Instead of rotting away, they got like old dark leather. Them bodies that morning, they were little kids. The youngest might have been six or so, and the oldest maybe seven or eight. It takes you strange digging up a little dead kid like that, from so far back, and dead for so long, and all the time they ever had been just that little. I put my hand in the muck and reach it down and come up with something. It were a show figure, like the ones in the user show. Mm. A wooden head and hands and the rest of it cloth. All it had gone black and the showman's hands still in it. Cut off just a little way up the wrist. A grown up hand and a regular showman he'd been because when I wiped it off you could see the callus round the head of the finger. Same as all the user show men have. This here figure, though, it weren't like no other figure I ever seen. It were crooked. Had a hump on its back and Papa soaked there in the cloth. For a while I couldn't think it, what it might be. Then, when it come to me what it were, I couldn't hardly believe it. it, it but yet there were no mistake in it. It were a hump. And it were meant to be a hump. The head weren't like no other head I ever seen in a show, neither. The face had a big nose, what hook it down. and. A big chin what hook it up, and a smiling mouth. Some kind of little pointy hat on the head and it curve it over with a wagger on the end of it. I've been so interested in the figure and the dead hand I hadn't been taking no notice of no one round me. I look it up and there were this little whitey bloke, bell not fist, standing by the hole and his little pinky eye on me. I felt like making the bad luck go away sign. Fist says, what you got there? I didn't say nothing. We weren't allowed to keep nothing we found in the digging. Sometimes he used to search us, though not always. <clears throat> he says, you best answer me. I said, what's that you've got there? I said, why don't you have a look for yourself? He says, all right, I will, then give it here. And he come to the edge of the hole and stuck out his hand. I put the figure and the dead hand in my pocket. Then quick. I grab it Fist's hand in both of mine and I whirl round fast and slung him over my shoulder, head first in the muck. I couldn't do nothing else to save my life. And out of the corner of my eye, I seen his feet sticking up out of the muck and kicking and chalk and marchman, the first man of the digging, coming after me. I up it out of the hole with my feet sucking and squelching and up the mound dirt to the high walk and over the fence before I knew it, what I were doing. It were my feet done it by themselves, I never give it no thought at all. Come down with a thump on the outside of the fence and sliding down the slippy bank to the <coughs> ditch, which, which I come up out of it, soak it and sopping, and there were the black leader waiting for me with his yellow eyes, just standing there in the rain and waiting for me. <sighs>